system rather than just like one single thing. So it's more of a lab about kind of building a conceptual understanding of how memory is working in OSB. If you find yourself writing like dozens of lines of code for some particular function, you're likely making it more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, speaking of the lab, any questions about that or any of the, the memory stuff we've been looking at? All right, one thing that I wanted to start out with is I didn't get a chance to put these diagrams on the board for our different strategies for getting our page tables to be smaller, not such a crazy amount of overhead. So the first one was combining pages and segmentation. Uh, and this is the idea that now for each segment, rather than keeping a base and a bound for the segment, the segment just says, oh, for this segment, go look up in this page table. So like the code segment has its own page table, the stack segment has its own page table. And since these segments, these regions of virtual memory are likely much smaller than the entirety of virtual memory, these page tables also smaller than a page table that needs to cover all of virtual memory. Does this make sense? Questions about this? Diagram here. Oh. One second, I'm a little bit confused. I mean, like, how do you just like that the index or some stuff? Like, is, is it just like, because like, how, like, there's, is it like a set off there? Because it next to the second table, like 0, 1, 2, or 3. So, how do you get that from the actual virtual object? Or is it like you have some other table? Uh, so, like, where is this segment part of the virtual address coming yeah. from? Uh, just like our kind of virtual page number, how big that was, like how big these different se sections of the virtual address are, that's determined by how many like different things we need to index with them. So in this case, we have four segments for a process, so we're going to use the highest two bits of the virtual address as the segment so index. Does that not work? Doesn't like the code have like a bunch of zeros and same with like the speech, or is it? Uh, so under this scheme, you would locate okay. these segments in kind of regions of virtual memory. You can put them anywhere in virtual memory that you want. Um, so you would need to locate the, the segments in regions of virtual memory that have distinct higher order bits. Yeah, that's, that would be a, an important implementation detail. Other questions about our page segmentation? One nice property of this I didn't mention is that now we can share memory between processes on either this entire segment level or on the individual page level. So two processes segment tables can actually point to the same page table or an individual entry in a page table on two different page tables can point to the same physical page. Uh, so we can do some, some fancy things with sharing there. The other uh, approach that we talked about was this multi-level paging. And this meant that kind of we had multiple levels of, of page tables, but to say a bit more about how this is going to work, we have some lowest level of page table, which has our actual 
page table entries, our actual physical page number offset that actually takes us to a physical page. The higher levels, what's in that entry is a pointer to here's the next level of page table that you should look at. Uh, and so you can imagine each of these level one entries are either null or they point to an entire level two table. And each entry at level two is either null or it points to an entire level three table. And so we kind of walk down this uh, hierarchy using different parts of the virtual address as the indexes into these tables. So the highest order bits tell us kind of the at the highest level, the, the biggest chunk of memory that we're going to uh, that this virtual address corresponds to. And so we look up the entry in that level one table, which directs us to, okay, this is the level two table that you should use this next part of the virtual address to index into. Sorry. So if it hits a null, does that mean it has to create a new table, or is it? Yeah, so if it hits a null, we have a page fault. Yeah. And if this is, uh, uh, and like if this was OSV, we would check, okay, is this virtual address in some valid region? Which means that it sh it's fine to access it, we just don't have a physical page for it yet, we don't have an entry in the page table. Um, and so if this, if we hit say a null at level two, that means that we have not put allocated any pages in kind of the entire region of virtual memory that that entry in level two represents. So we'll allocate a physical page and we'll put in an entry uh, uh, for that page and the machinery for kind of mapping a new virtual page interacts with this whole hierarchy. So it would, it would fill in an entry at level two, and that would create an entire level three table, which would start out with just one non-null entry. Other questions? So, <laughs> so does that mean, well, I mean, if, if it's only got one entry in it, then doesn't that mean that index three, like, what if index three doesn't point to the first index of level three? I mean, like, if you're, if you're creating, if you, if you go into level two, it's null, and uh, you create a level three, right, page table, and then you try to index into it at wherever index three is said you did, where you should index in. And, I mean, you've only created a single entry in level three, and it's the very top. Uh, no, it's normal? not necessarily the very top. When we map, like, gotcha. we, we took the address that is being accessed and we gotcha, made an gotcha, entry gotcha. for that. Gotcha. So whatever gotcha. index three would go to, that's the entry I see, that we took. I see, I see. Other questions? All right. So, what was uh, so these kind of multi-level schemes? They handle uh, they they reduce the kind of uh, memory overhead problem we're having. Our page tables were too big. We've gotten them down to a manageable size. Uh, what was uh, the other big problem with our kind of initial paging scheme? Uh, yeah, and this multi-level approach made it even worse because each of these page tables is in memory somewhere, and kind of each page table we index into that's a separate memory access. Um, and uh, even if, as might be likely, the memory for these page tables is in some cache. We still have a bunch of kind of separate memory accesses as we traverse this multiple level to actually do the full translation. And so even if it's a cache, uh, we'd still like to just cut down on the total memory accesses uh, rather than having kind of one for each of in x uh, in 64 bit x86. We're talking about four tables. So accessing four separate times to just do the address translation and then actually going and getting the data that we're looking for. So, are memory lookups making you sad? 
Are you crying? Me uh, uh, memory overhead tears? Caches are coming to the rescue. And in particular, we will add a cache dedicated to dedicated to caching the results of address translation. Now this name is terrible. Like translation look aside buffer, it should be called like address translation cache or uh, uh, page table entry cache, something like that. But it was named translation look aside buffer, TLB for short, so that's what we're stuck with. So what would we need to actually store in our TLB in order to be able to get from this cache what we need uh, to avoid all sorts of page tables? Yeah, so we'll we'll need the physical page number, certainly. Because how we get our physical addresses from the page table is we take the physical page number stored in some slot in the page table and concatenate it with the offset portion of our virtual address. So we definitely need this. Uh, I also agree that we will need some part of the virtual address. Perhaps our virtual page number, but some way to tell does this entry in our cache like match the virtual address that we're trying to translate? Uh, if we want to skip the page table entirely, what is there other information that we might need at this point? Once we get this physical address, we're headed to physical memory. Yes. Yes. Right, permissions are an important part of the page table entry. Can we write to this page? Can we read from this page? Uh, and if we're going to skip the page table, we need that information here so that we can, before we head off to physical memory, make sure that we're allowed to do that. Also, like the page table entry, we're going to want some way to tell, is this entry in the cache like a valid one, or is it kind of an empty spot that we just haven't filled in with uh, information yet? And so without, like, there is some line in the cache, it has some bytes there, and if all we have are these different pieces, we don't have a way to tell are these like real or are they just whatever, or are they just uninitialized? And so having some extra bit to tell us, yes, this is actually a real entry or no, nothing has, nothing real has been put here or this is, don't consider this valid, uh, that's going to be very useful. With me so far? Any questions? All right, so the cost now uh, our cost of translation before was the cost of our page table lookup. So now that we have this TLB, how would that change the cost of translation? Well, 
Yes, we have one TOV lookup plus, and we can say the probability of a TLB miss times the cost of going all the way to the page table. So we've gone from the cost of a page table lookup to now we always look up in the TLB and, what, and the probability of not finding our uh, data in that cache times the cost of what we have to do when we don't find it, which is the page table lookup. So given this cost, what needs to be true for this to actually be an improvement on what we were doing before? If, yeah, so this, this probability, we need it to be low. If we have lots of TLB misses, then this doesn't help us very much. So we need this probability to be low. Anything else? Okay. We, we want our TLB lookup to be fast. Yes, this TLB lookup needs to be much faster than the cost of going to the page table. Like if these are about the same, then we really have not helped ourselves at all. So we need TLB lookup very fast, probably as low. As long as that's true, this is going to uh, help us quite a bit, performance wise. As with all caching, this is going to depend on locality. So if a program's memory accesses are scattered across many different pages, then having a particular address translation from uh, is not necessarily going to help us very much. Because we just won't be getting hits very often if we're always kind of jumping around to a different part of virtual memory. I'm going to put this in diagram form. Have our CPU. We send our virtual address to our TLB, and uh, if the TLB there are two two outcomes here. We can get a TLB hit or a TLB miss. If we get a hit, we get our physical page number. And for our virtual address, we get the offset. That kind of lower part of our, uh, the lower bits of our virtual address, we take our physical page number, concatenate it on with the offset, and that gives us our physical address, which heads off to. We have a miss. We're extending on the virtual address to our page table. Our page table, if we have a valid page table entry for that virtual page number, that's the other way that we get our physical page number. And Invalid. If we don't find a valid entry in our page table, then that's a processor exception, page fault, head into the page fault. Handle. This making sense? All right, so. One neat thing about this translation look aside buffer uh, is it's going to be what's called a fully associative cache, which just means.
that for a particular piece of data, particular address translation that we're storing in our cache, it can go in any of the slots in that cache. There are other designs uh, of caches called direct mapped or set associative, which for a given data restrict which parts of the cache it can be in. This is kind of simpler and lower cost to implement. So for bigger caches, we typically wouldn't see them as fully associative. But for our small TLB, that's going to be a, a good choice. And what that means is that when we have our virtual address, and our virtual page number and offset, we can check in parallel whether this virtual page number matches any of the entries in our cache. So that's one nice advantage of our fully associative. We can just check. Uh, this is implemented in hardware, so we can check uh, this like VPN comes into the cache and it in parallel checks it against all entries in the cache. Another reason why this isn't a very scalable uh, design, that if we want a really huge cache, and if the, we come up against limits of like just the physical space required in getting the information to happen all in parallel. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how it checks at the same time. So uh, this is, uh, so the way that I think about it anyway, is that virtual page number comes into the cache and the cache uh, circuitry kind of send, like duplicates this information across wires to all the different kind of circuits within the cache and each of those has logic to take in some information and compare it against what's stored there. Uh, and then the cache is kind of collecting the output of all the different uh, slots in the cache, and if any of them kind of says, hey, it's here, then it knows where it is. Gotcha. Thank you. Oh. Is there really like one TLD cache per system or like one per processor? Like, is there like a four core processor and four TLD caches? Or one? Uh, yes, excellent question. Uh, this is one per CPU. So we want this cache to be really, really fast. And making a cache really, really fast, the next way to do that is to put it literally as part of the CPU right next to uh, the processor. Um, and so uh, that means we'll have one of these for a CPU, which uh, we'll get to uh, will cause some complications versus just having uh, one that's shared by all CPUs. But yeah, for performance, we need this to be one for CPU. Other questions? How big do these tend to be in practice compared to like the caches that we talked about, like the i7 and stuff? Yeah, so uh, TLBs will hold uh, on the order of like 128 to maybe 1024 of our kind of page table entries. Um, and so our page table entries are a few bytes. Uh, so uh, that means that our the TLB could be as big as a few kilobytes, but likely smaller, um, which uh, means that it, it may be bigger than our level one caches, but certainly smaller than anything else. So on the order of as small as our caches are on the system. Other questions? All right, so we have this. Uh, kind of wonderful TLB. Um, however, uh, we still have this kind of two stage uh, process here in this diagram. Virtual address comes out from the CPU, we're fetching some data. We go to the TLB, but the TLB is just caching the kind of translation part. And so we still then head off to memory. Uh, which maybe we're, we're lucky and we hit a cache a memory here. I mean, this is kind of our whole memory hierarchy, different levels of caches all the way down to main memory. But we still have kind of this two-stage thing. Uh, so maybe this is still too slow. We still want better performance from our system. And so uh, what we can do is 
is just like before, just add more caches. <laughs> more caching, more better. Uh, so we're actually going to have a virtually addressed cache. So all our caches down here in memory, these are using physical addresses because they occur kind of downstream of our address translation. But we can actually have a virtually addressed cache. So our CPU still sending out its virtual address. When we first check in this cache that stores data by virtual addresses, is it in this cache? And if we get a hit here, I should say this memory eventually sends the actual data we're looking for back to the CPU. That's it's an important part. Uh, but if we get a hit on this virtual cache, that's we have the data immediately. We don't need to touch any other part of this system. Uh, and if we don't find it in that cache, uh, then we can do our kind of address translation um, and uh, find it there. And if we want to go even faster, we don't have to wait for looking up in the virtual cache before we look up in the TLB. Well, the, the processor will actually send the virtual address to the TLB and the virtual cache at the same time. And, wait, and maybe we'll get the data back from the virtual cache first, or maybe that will be a miss and it will kind of wait for the address translation and retrieving it from the rest of memory. So every time you switch between processes, would you have to go through and zero out the entire virtual cache? Because those addresses would... Yes, excellent point. That now that we're using virtual addresses, all our different processes have their own virtual address space. So, yeah, we're going to have to think about what do we need to do when we switch processes. And yeah, we'll we'll get to that because this this applies actually to to both of these. Good question. Other question? So to Put this in a, a concrete example. If you call, doesn't think the internet is exciting. Uh, so if you recall that our um, kind of Intel Core i7 had our kind of L1, L2, L3 caches, uh, in that system, The L1 caches are virtually addressed, and the L2 and L3 are physically addressed. So each CPU in this Intel chip would send a virtual address to its L1 caches and to its TLB. And then uh, on a TLB miss, uh, uh, and, and then if on a virtual cache miss, uh, it would head into the L2 and then L3 and then finally main memory. Uh, and so we had kind of complete this picture by just making it clear that we have physical caches, and then after that, physical memory. So we'll look in the caches first at this point, and then only if we don't find it there, go to go to actual event memory. All right, so this all seems like great news. Uh, we have all sorts of, of new exciting caches that are, are dramatically reducing these kind of extra uh, memory accesses. We're avoiding going to the page table. Um, however, there are some situations where this is not going to work so well. Uh, so let's say uh, 
Our TOV has 256 entries. And uh, we want to draw an image on the screen. Common thing we want computers to do. So uh, if we have, say, a display with the following properties, 32-bit color, so each pixel takes 32 bits, uh, and our resolution is uh, something like 2K by 1K, some uh, kind of relatively high-definition uh, display. And our page size, let's say that's that's four kilobytes. Uh, take a moment with your neighbors and work out how many pages uh, where will our display take? Like how many pages of data would it take to kind of uh, uh, hold every pixel in our display? And uh, how would that match up with kind of the number of TOB entries that we have? Uh, and assume that our um, that our data is held in something called the video frame buffer, where uh, each Uh, uh, where, where we have uh, the pixels stored in, in row major order. So kind of one big continuous chunk, kind of each pixel, uh, uh, think of it as like a big array, a uh, big 2D array of pixels. All right, so work with those around you to determine like how the needs of drawing this display match up against our TLB cache. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk about this. So, uh, how uh, how much data is our is our display take up in terms of, of pages or or bytes? Yeah, this is going to work out to eight megabytes of data, uh, and. How many four kilobyte pages is that? That's two two k pages, two thousand forty eight uh, for working the powers of two. Uh, how does that stack up against the number of pages our TLB can handle? It's more. <laughs> yeah, it's eight times. What our TLB can handle because if we have 256 4K pages, that's kind of one megabyte total. So this is not great, as it means we draw the screen and we're caching kind of if each of these kind of rows is like one page of pixel data. We get down we get down to the bottom and it's kind of the the last. Uh, uh, 256 pages that are in the TLB, and then the next time we draw the screen, we start from the top, and nothing is in the TLB again. Uh, we just get lots of uh, basically nothing but but TLB entries um, when our TLB is uh, is much smaller than, than something like our our frame buffer. Yeah. Which split also TLB bits? Because you ask like the first pixel of the page, then there'll be like 999 more pixels. Like you only miss one 1,000 at a time, which doesn't sound like that. Um, yes, uh, but when we, so I guess it's the case that when we start uh, working through the frame buffer, like we never have any of these pages in the TLB. And we're doing this operation so often, it seems like we ought to be, be able to like have someone where we can actually get some TLB hits when we, when we go through these pages. Um, I mean, it gets, uh, if we're just going through them in order, that's fine. If we're drawing a vertical line, which would involve like 
They go here and here and here and here. Now we're really sad. As this field be missed, field be missed, field be missed, field be missed, nothing but missed if we are like accessing the data kind of uh, to draw a vertical line on the screen. Uh, so we have an uh, uh, exciting new technique to our rescue. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a super page. And our page is kind of a kind of four kilobytes of contiguous memory. Our super page is a set of contiguous pages. And kind of intuition for this is we have something like this video frame buffer. It's 2,000 contiguous pages, this big array, basically. Uh, and if we could somehow translate our virtual address to, like, get the physical address at the start of this, and then just have an offset into it, uh, we don't need, there aren't kind of separate translations to, like, different parts of this. Like, it's, it's all contiguous. So if we had some way of just getting the physical address at the start, then we could have just one TLD entry for the entire chunk. So what would this actually look like? We'd have our virtual address. And we have been dividing it into our page number and offset, our virtual page number. And now we will also divide it into our super page number and the offset. Or the super page number is going to be fewer bits than our virtual page number because since it's a larger chunk of virtual memory, there are going to be kind of fewer bits. Uh, that we can say are shared across all the virtual addresses in that range. And then when we go to our TLB, we will have our typical, like before, we will have a virtual page number, a physical page number, access information, and, and like other bits as well. But now for each of these, we'll have a super page number or a virtual page number, a uh, super physical page number or physical page number. And We'll take both our super page number and our virtual page number to check against each of these entries. And uh, something we'll add is a kind of bit or maybe a couple bits to tell us, like, is this entry a super page or a regular page? And if we find something that matches a super page, we can get the kind of super page part of that physical address and concatenate it with this offset. And that would be like our super page physical address would be like the start of this uh, large frame buffer. And uh, the offset would tell us kind of where in this entire frame buffer, like both the page and then where within the page. Uh, the physical address would be. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a question. How do we know when this array of pages ends? Um, like this, like this video. Yeah. Frame buffer. Um, from the perspective of address translation, uh, we 
we don't know or need to know like yes. where it ends because we're just translating into a physical address. Mm -hmm. um, but if we had an address that was past the end, mm -hmm. its kind of super page number would not match right. the one for this sort of chunk of, of because our super pages are aligned to the page boundaries. So they don't ever include like half of a page. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had an address kind of before or after, it just wouldn't match the, the super page number. Yeah. So if our like video frame buffer was not a multiple of the super page like, or of the page number size, I guess, then could you get to the like you could have part of it that wouldn't be in the super page, I'm wondering. Yeah, so this is a good point that for our super pages, uh, typically a super page will represent the entire set of pages in some page table. So if we're talking about x86, and if we have uh, we have one page that's four kilobytes of memory. If we have a super page that represents one entire page table, like the lowest level of page table, that's going to give us uh, two megabytes worth of, of memory. Uh, if we have A super page that corresponds to an entire level two page table. Uh, this super page is one gigabyte in size. So, uh, in the case of this particular video frame example, it was eight megabytes. So, probably consists of kind of four of these uh, super pages. So, instead of needing 2,000 entries in our TLB, it just needs four. And we just kind of break up our virtual address differently in order to compute a, a physical address based on uh, the super page. Yeah. So, like, on the CPU different address, how does no one break up like, the super page number for both two megabytes or one gigabyte? Or does it just try both of them? Uh, yeah, so that, that's why I hedged and said this super page probably more than one bit. Okay. Because we probably need to know which kind of super page it is. Uh, and yes, I think in, in that case, the CPU would need to actually have kind of different sizes of, of super page address, or maybe uh, like the division of labor here, like I'm not making any strong claims about that. The CPU might just send the virtual page number and the TLB is set up to kind of try these different, to like take that virtual page number and use different parts of it based on like what the what kind of super page it is. Yeah. The reason that we use such a huge page is because we already know that the video stream is going to be huge, right? Like we, we don't do that on normal programming because we, we want to be sure that we want to prevent things from trying to take. So we would the this the the operating system would be the part of the system that's deciding uh, whether to treat things as super pages or not, uh, and so if and it really is like if we have a contiguous region of memory, both virtual and physical, uh, that's the situation where we can use these super pages for our advantage. So this video frame buffer, well, there's this big contiguous region, but if you have kind of a, a giant matrix in some scientific computation, uh, that would be another example where super pages would probably come into play, because it would be kind of megabytes and megabytes or a, a, a gigabyte of some enormous kind of matrix of, of numerical data. Huh? But like you said, to, the system knows it's a contiguous and virtual. How can it's contiguous and how can like guarantee it's contiguous and physical? Like isn't, it, uh, isn't what physical page you get arbitrary? So can't, like why are you saying that they can be contiguous? So does the CPU just like the OS say make this contiguous? Yeah, so you, you've identified that while this uh, improves our kind of TLB cache performance, we've sort of regressed and made memory management more complex again, because now we have different sizes of allocation. It's not just a single page. 
we sometimes will want to allocate some chunk of contiguous uh, physical space. So, yes, the the oh, I, there would be a facility to say not just allocate one page, but allocate some chunk of uh, physical page. Other questions? All right. So, before going any further, I need to tell you about uh, someone who, in, in my opinion, is perhaps the United States most forgettable president. Um, this is Benjamin Harrison. Uh, so, Grover Cleveland, first Democrat elected since the Civil War, ran for re-election, lost to, to uh, Harrison, despite both getting more, uh, uh, despite getting a plurality of the popular vote and also improving on uh, his vote percentage from, from his previous election, still lost uh, the, uh, in the Electoral College. Uh, the vote in the U.S. remained very sectional between the two parties. Um, and uh, Harrison was, uh, again, a kind of, the administration was fairly corrupt, but he also was something of a uh, of a reformer. Um, uh, signed the, the Sherman Antitrust Act, which, unfortunately, for uh, the initial decades of its implementation, was used against labor unions because these were uh, confederations that restrained trade, which was the language in the law. So it was not actually used against monopolistic companies, but against uh, labor unions for a uh, few decades. Um, he also uh, both inherited a big government surplus and raised the, the tariff dramatically kind of to protect U.S. industry from foreign competition. And so uh, his critics really crit uh, were uh, against the kind of large government spending during this time, um, both the government collecting lots of money and then, and then spending it was, uh, was not very popular. Um, and Harrison is, is again, uh, a one-term president. And uh, uh, spoilers, we're going to see a, a familiar face uh, uh, for the, uh, his successor. Um, last fact about Harrison, he's actually, I believe, the grandson of someone else we have talked about, William Henry Harrison. Uh, you may remember him as the uh, president who, who had an um, extremely short uh, term in office. Um, uh, just a few weeks, uh, so so Harrison uh, beat him, beat his grandfather on that count. Uh, all right. So, uh, remaining time, I want to uh, mention some some challenges uh, that we get into when uh, uh, when we have uh, the these caches. Uh, has been mentioned already that for our uh, virtually addressed cache, when we uh, uh, when we change uh, the the uh, which process is running, it shouldn't look up its virtual addresses in this virtual cache and retrieve data from some other process. Um, and this applies to the the TLB as well. So. When we have a context switch, when we switch from running one process to another, uh, our TLB has all these entries for translating virtual addresses from the previous process to uh, a physical address. And so uh, I'd like you to discuss with your neighbors uh, several possible responses to this. Where on a context switch, could we reuse the TLB? Why, like, just use the things that are there, basically do nothing? Uh, why or why not? Uh, we might also consider just like throwing out everything that's currently in the TLB. Uh, what would the effect of that be? 
Uh, and is there some information we could add to a TLB entry that would be helpful in this case? So uh, please uh, take a minute and discuss this uh, with your neighbors. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about our, our options here. Could we, could we reuse the TLB? Is that, is that going to be kosher? No. Why not? Yeah. All the stuff that's in there for the other classes, they would do the same. Exactly. So we, we, we can't have our the new process reading the old processes uh, data. That would be a problem. How about discarding the, the TLB? Um, it would work, but we only get TLB misses when we switch the, the context. So, when in particular, like when in particular, would we get lots? Because we switched to a new process, and we're saying we can't use any of those old entries anyway. Uh, so the new process, we sort of it has to get misses. Uh, but I think this is a, a good point. When would we have lots? Of well, when you switch back to the first process, all of that data had to be wiped before, so you now need to like add it all back in somehow, or just like wait for it to be added. Exactly. That if we're doing lots of context switching, like back and forth between several processes, and we're discarding all their cached uh, page table entries each time, uh, that that performance is going to suffer. Um, uh, actually, discarding it, early systems did take this approach. Um, uh, Modern architecture actually supports instructions uh, or operations to uh, get rid of a single entry rather than the whole thing, um, uh, and to like get rid of an entry. Typically, that would be just setting the value to zero, so that it doesn't like come up as a, a hit anymore and will get replaced uh, before anything that, that is valid. Uh, how about is there information that we can add to a TLB entry? I was just thinking, if everything is being added, you know, sequentially, we could just have an index to our last, like, of all the stuff that we're using, and then when we switch processes, we get to bring it back to zero and save that index for the previous process. Um, or, or not save it, but, like, if you just reset it to zero, then you know that uh, when, you try to, when you try to search through it, you're like, okay, search through the first zero of them, and there's nothing to search through, so it starts adding new ones and overwriting. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. It would make the kind of architecture of the TLB, um, I think that would add significant complexity because we kind of want to search everything in parallel and now we have this kind of index that's telling us like only part of this can be searched. Um, yeah, so I, that, that would require kind of a significant redesign. Maybe each process could have a unique identifier and then we can add it to, um, so like each virtual mapping and physical mapping would have like an extra thing at the end that says, hey, this is for this process. Um, yeah, that is that is a great idea. Anyone remember what our, our identifiers for processes are? Process ID. Process ID. Yeah. yeah, we could just add our process ID to each entry in the TLB and now we all we that kind of the CPU that, that's checked uh, along with the virtual address to say, okay, is this entry actually from this process? So by kind of keeping a little bit more information in the TLB, we don't actually have to discard anything. We just know not to uh, not to consider entries with a, a, a PID that doesn't match. Those are invalid. They might get replaced if we bring enough new uh, entries into the TLB. But uh, this this is going to be a nice uh, nice solution to this problem. All right. That'll do it for today. Uh, have a good weekend. Uh, lab for design documents at 9 p.m. And I'll see you Monday. Papa Doom Baum, I said, nobody knows just how it started. Somebody.